Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating four bohemian style DIY projects for your home. Now these projects feature a warm and natural tone and we'll be using wood, natural fibers, and textile prints in these projects. Now I was inspired to create these pieces after seeing some beautiful artistic prints at Society6 and I knew I could use the idea to create high-end looks on a Dollar Tree budget. Now for your convenience, I provided the list of supplies and tools used to make these projects in the description box below. Now I'm very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hi and welcome back to my fantastic subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now let's jump right in. Now project number one is a wood planter box. Now for this project, we'll need two solid wood boxes from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need five wood beads, blocks, or marbles from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do is stain our boxes. So I'm going to protect my work surface and gather my supplies. Now I'll be using this Jacobian stain by Minwax for this project. Now, of course, we always want to make sure that the stain has been stirred well before we start. And so now what I'm doing is I'm going to take my rag and I'm going, I'm going to apply that stain on the wood box. I want to make sure I get into all those little creases. Now I'm just going to apply one coat of this stain all over the box and I want to do the inside out and the bottom. And then I'm going to repeat this for that second box. So now we're just going to take those beads and I'm going to stain those as well. And once everything is stained, I'm going to sit them out to dry. Now once dry, we can take our boxes and we're going to adhere them together. Now I'm going to be using this wood glue from the Dollar Tree and I'm adding it to one end of each box. And then I'm just going to press the two boxes together and you can use some clips to hold them together. Now for a bit of extra security, I'm going to apply a few staples to the inside of the box, making sure they're nice and secure. So after you staple, you can go ahead and remove those clips and we can start to add our beads. So we're going to flip it over to the bottom and we're going to be placing a bead on each corner and one in the middle. So I'm applying a dot of that wood glue in each one of those places and then applying a bead. And once this is dry, you can style your planter. And here is the completed project. Now I added a variety of succulents and I love the way that this turned out. Now the wood boxes at Dollar Tree are really great quality and they take stain really well. I love how this look came together and it looks so high end. And that natural wood grain comes through so well on this piece and I think it turned out great. Whether you use plants or storage, there's so many uses for this cute little planner. Now project number two is a pair of decorative vases. Now for this project, we will need two black candle holders from the Dollar Tree and two of the shorter glass vases from the Dollar Tree as well. Now the first thing we're going to do is clean the outside of our vases thoroughly with rubbing alcohol to remove any of the residue. Now I will be painting the vases and I will be using white chalk paint to do this. Now I'm going to be applying two coats of this chalk paint to the vases and I want to make sure that they completely dry in between the coats to prevent any cracking. Now you want to make sure both jars are completely covered and it's a nice even finish.
Now once both coats are dry, I'm gonna take a piece of painter's tape and my ruler and I'm gonna mark it in one inch increments. And then I'm gonna take that tape and I wanna wrap it around the vase close to that top edge. And then I'm gonna transfer those marks to the vase with a pencil. Now once all the marks are there, I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna make one of the marks at the bottom of the vase. And then I'm gonna take that same piece of tape and move it to the bottom of the vase, aligning it with that mark. And then I'm gonna repeat the transfer of those one inch marks all the way around. So once all the marks are done, we're gonna take our ruler and line up the marks end to end, and we're gonna make long tick marks about an inch long from end to end on the vase. And here is what it should look like. Now you wanna repeat this all the way around the vase. And here are all of our tick lines. So now we're gonna add a design. Now for this first column, I'm adding three arrows up and three arrows down and repeating that pattern. And then for that second column, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding four horizontal lines, 12 dots, and then four vertical lines in 12 dots in a repeated pattern. Now I'm gonna repeat this all the way around the entire vase. Now since I had an odd number of columns, two of the same patterns will end up touching, but it's no big deal. And then I'm gonna repeat this process for the other vase. And here are both vases with the completed patterns. Now I'm gonna go over the patterns with the Sharpie. Now to protect our design, I will be using this matte Mod Podge. Now I just wanna apply that Mod Podge to the vase in long continuous strokes along the length of the vase. And then you wanna sit the vases out to dry completely and when they are dry, we can add those candle holder bases to the bottom. So I'm gonna be using hot glue to apply these in case I wanna remove the bases in the future before a permanent hold, make sure you use E6000. Now I wanna apply glue around the top of that candle holder and then place the vase on top, pressing it into place. Now you just wanna repeat this for both vases and then you are complete. So now we can place our creations on display. Now I really love how these turned out. Now the mud cloth style print on these vases really turned out great and it really looks like high end cloth design. Now you can place a battery operated candle inside for a soft glow or even a real or silk greenery if you're going for a more organic look. Now project number three is a pair of rug pillow covers. Now for each pillow, you will need one of these rag rugs from the Dollar Tree. And you'll also need an adult t-shirt from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we want to do is mark the good side of the rug and I'm just going to be placing a couple of pieces ta of tape on that side. Then go ahead and remove all those tags and then we're going to trim one of the ed edges even. We want to be careful not to cut that stitch line. Then to make a square pillow, I'm just gonna fold up the corner to the top edge as shown here. And once we have it even, I'm gonna take some of this clear tape and I wanna apply it to the rug, making sure half of that tape runs underneath that overlapped edge. 
Now we're just gonna press that firmly into place and fold that rug back over and we're gonna end up cutting off that excess rug down the center of that piece of tape. So now the tape will hold those loose strands in place while we work. So now I'm gonna take the t-shirt and I'm gonna lay it out making sure the bottom edge of that shirt is nice, smooth, and even. And then I wanna lay that rug piece on top letting about a third of the rug hang off that bottom edge of the shirt. And then I'm gonna cut through both layers of the shirt around that rug piece. So what you will end up doing is you'll end up having two pieces and each will have a finished hem. So now we're ready to assemble the pillow. So we wanna lay out one piece of the shirt with the good side facing the good side of the rug. We're gonna line up that raw edge with the raw edge of the pillow. And then we're gonna do that to the opposite side and we wanna make sure those hem pieces are always towards the middle. So now we're gonna pin this all the way around with straight pins. Now my intention was to have an optional glue method with this cover, but with the way this rug is made, sewing is the very best option and it's also easy to do. So now that it's all pinned into place, you're just gonna sew completely all the way around the edge, leaving about a half inch seam allowance. And you can do this easily with a basic sewing machine or by hand. Now here is the cover all sewn, and I used a lighter color of thread just so you could see the stitching, but use black or the color of your pillow if you make this. Now you're just gonna trim all the loose strings and trim down those corners. So now all we have to do is turn the pillow cover right side out. We're just gonna push out those corners and we're gonna remove all of our tape. So now we're just gonna adjust our pillow cover and make sure everything is in place and it looks good. So now I'm just taking a pillow that I already had on hand and I'm inserting it into the cover. Now you wanna make sure those corners fit into place and once that pillow is inside, just smooth out the back closure. And then you just repeat this for your second pillow and these are ready to decorate with. So simple and easy to make. And check out how this set turned out. I just can't believe how easy these were to make. When I saw these rag rugs at the Dollar Tree, they really gave me boho vibes and I knew I just had to incorporate them into this decor theme. Now the quality of these is actually really great and I'm really surprised on how beautiful they turned out. Now these covers can be removed and watch, which makes them not only beautiful, but also versatile. Now project number four is a two piece wall decor set. Now for this project, we'll need one tin pack of these gallon stir sticks. We'll also need a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree. And we'll also need printable pattern provided in the description box below. Now the first thing we're gonna do is remove those paint sticks from the package and we wanna separate eight of them for this project. Now these sticks have a printed side and a blank side, so keep that in mind while working on this project. So now we need to print three copies of the design. We need to print two on cardstock for mounting and one on regular paper for fitting, which we're doing here. We wanna take that fitting sheet and what we wanna do is mark the horizontal and vertical centers of the design like I'm showing here. And then I'm just gonna go over the lines with a Sharpie. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mark a frame around the design. Now this is where you want your paint stick frame to match up. And 
And then you wanna take your sticks and you wanna line them up along the line and mark where that vertical and horizontal line crosses it. Now, after making one, I learned that taping them down and doing one stick at a time has the best results. Now, don't forget to mark which side it belongs to on the back of the stick so you can assemble them easily when they're cut. So once everything is marked, you can go ahead and cut these. Now you can use an X-Acto knife, a utility blade, but an electric saw will give you the best and cleanest results. You're gonna repeat this with your second frame and then put your pieces together to make sure that they fit. So now that all our pieces are cut, we're going to stain them with what? That Jacobian stain by Minwax. Now we're gonna cover the top and the sides and the corners. And once everything is stained, we wanna let these sit to completely dry. So now that they are dry, we can start to apply them to the cardstock art. But first we got to fit the printouts to the foam board by cutting them out. So I'm just gonna cut out the design, leaving about an inch and a half to two inches uh, around the whole design. And then I'm gonna adhere those printouts to the foam board using some Mod Podge. Now I wanna apply a light coat to the back of the printouts, and then I wanna press it into place on the foam board, making sure you remove any bubbles. And now that both pieces are applied, we're going to apply a coat of that Mod Podge over each piece to seal in the design. So now that everything is dry, we can cut the two pieces apart. So now we're gonna take our frame pieces and we're just gonna attach it together by simply adding a few dabs of that hot glue to the seams. And then you wanna take your fully assembled frame and you wanna place it on top of one of the art pieces, making sure that it's nice and centered, and then trace the outside shape onto the board. And then I'm just gonna cut out that shape with my X-Acto knife about a quarter of an inch inside of the line you just traced. And then I'm gonna apply some hot glue around the edge of the art piece. And then I'm gonna take my frame and I'm gonna press my frame into place on top of it. You just wanna make sure it's nice and centered. And now you're just gonna flip your piece over and you can just add hot glue to the seams for extra security. Now to hang our pieces, I'm gonna use a piece of jute string and make it into a loop. We're gonna apply it to the back of our pieces. And all we do is put that loop on the back and we attach it with some hot glue. Now I understand that cutting and adjusting can be a little challenging for some, but there's an easier option. Now you can also just take these printouts and frame them into eight by 10 Dollar Tree frames and they still look great. And so now that our glue is dried and complete, we can hang these up in our space. 
Now these pieces really look great with the wood and perfectly blend into the boho theme. You can make as many in your design as you like. Now these projects today were so much fun to make. Let me know in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed and click that subscribe button below and turn on that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.